Welcome back to Cypress Academy PSOC 6 101. In the chapter three videos, I will show you how to add BLE connectivity to the robotic arm project that we've been working on. That will include both adding BLE to the main controller as well as building a remote control. Don't worry, we'll start simple and then build up from there. So let's get started. For this lesson, you will need either a BLE enabled smartphone and an app from Cypress called CY Smart, or the PC version of CY Smart, as well as the CY Smart BLE USB dongle that's included in your PSOC 6 BLE Pioneer Kit. Whichever version of the CY Smart application you choose will be used to read and write the BLE control signals to the PSOC 6 BLE robotic arm. In this video, I'll build the equivalent of the Hello World project, actually the blinking LED project for Bluetooth low energy. That example is also known as the Find Me project. Let's start by creating a project called 3-1 BLE Find Me. This project will have one task for BLE, which we'll call BLE Task. It will manage, get this, the BLE and it will run all of the required stuff to be an immediate alert service, or IES. The immediate alert service is specified by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group and is a simple peripheral that you can tell to be in high alert, mild alert, or no alert. Think of a tag that you could attach to your car keys. When you lose them, you could get on your phone and set the flag into one of those three states. For example, it could beep and flash in high alert, it could just flash in mild alert, and it could be totally off in the no alert state. I'm going to use printf and freeRTOS, so change the build settings to enable both of those libraries, just like almost every chapter so far. In freeRTOS.h, turn off the warning, Increase the heap size, enable semaphores, and modify the syscall priority. Once you've done that, let's edit the schematic. First, add the BLE component, then add a UART component, then four digital output pins, one for LED9 to indicate a connection, one for the red, green, and blue LEDs to represent the three alert levels, none, mild, and high. Go ahead and change the name of the digital output pins to LED9, red, blue, and green, and set their initial state to high, also known as off. Then set the last output pin to be named green and set its output state to low, which will cause the green LED to be on by default indicating the initial state of no alert. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and assign the pins in the DWR. First, the UART to be P50 and P51. Then blue is P111, green is P11, LED9 is P137, and finally the red is P03. Now we need to configure the BLE. This device is going to be a gap peripheral that accepts one connection. As I have talked about earlier, one of the cool things about PSOC 6 is that it has two cores. Remember, a CM4 and a CM0+. Our BLE implementation will let you run the controller part of the BLE stack on the CM0+, and the rest of the BLE stack on the CM4. To do this, you just need to select dual core. Once you've done that, let's edit the GAT settings. The immediate alert service is specified by the Bluetooth SIG. We made it easy for you to add into your project. Just right click on the server and select add service, then immediate alert. Now that our GAT database is set up, we can configure the GAP settings. First, let's name this device Find Me, then set up the advertising settings. Let's pick General Discovery Mode and No Timeout on the Advertising. Now let's configure the Advertising Packet to have the name of the device as well as the service UUID of the alert service. 
That's it for the schematic. Now you need to run build application to bring in all of the middleware and set up all of the connections. In order to make this work, you're going to do something new. That is, you're going to edit the cm0p.c. In this file, I need to start the BLE by calling cyble start. Then in the main loop, I need to call cyble process events. With all of that done, we're now ready to edit the main cm4.c to have the main loop of the BLE firmware. First, let's set up the includes, project.h, standardio.h, freeartos.h, task.h, semaphore.h, and limits.h. The limits.h is included so I can get the uint max. The LEDs on the board are active low, so I'll set up macros for them. LED on is a zero and LED off is a one. Then we need a semaphore for the BLE interrupt called the BLE semaphore. The way that our Bluetooth stack works is that you provide a function which can process events. We call these functions callbacks. When something happens that we think is interesting, we'll call your function with a parameter that will tell you what event occurred and then in that function you will need to do the right thing. For this project, we'll need to create two callbacks, one for handling the generic Bluetooth events and one for handling the immediate alert specific events. First, let's tackle the generic event handler. I'll declare the callback function. It will return a void, meaning nothing. I'll call it generic event handler. That makes sense. The Bluetooth stack will pass it an event code, which is just a uint32, and it will give it a void pointer to an event parameter. All of these event handler functions look about the same. They're just a big switch statement that look at the different kinds of events that can occur in the system. For this example, there are only three events that we care about. When the stack turns on, when a device is connected, like your phone, and finally when a device is disconnected. First, when the stack turns on, also known as CYBLE event stack on. For this case, all I want to do is print out a message that the stack is turned on, and then I want to start advertising. When I call the start advertisement function, our device will start sending out the advertising packets over the radio. This will let other devices see that we're there, and it will tell them our name, and it will tell them that we have an immediate alert service. Remember earlier when we specified all of this information in the BLE customizer on the gap settings page. The next event is the device connected event. When that happens, I'll print out a message that we are connected and then turn on LED9 to indicate that we have that connection. The last device of the generic event is the disconnect event. When that happens, I'll print out a disconnect message, turn off LED9, and then tell the BLE to start advertising again. That's all for the generic events. The next function is the event handler for the immediate alert service. Just like the last handler, it returns a void and I'll call it IS event handler. The BLE stack passes it an event code and an event parameter. First, I will declare a uint8 called the alert level that I'll use to temporarily hold the alert level. Then I will see what event has been sent to me. It turns out there's only one possible event, specifically CYBLE event IASS write characteristic. In other words, the only event that can occur is that the other side, the phone side, the gap central side, sent me a new value for the alert. I built this function so that if one day in the future, there's a new event created, I can easily add the ability to handle that into this function. So I will call the get characteristic value function to find out what the value the phone sent me. I'll tell this function that I want the alert level and I'll tell it to store it in the alert level variable, which is just one byte long. Once I know the alert level, I can decide what to do with it using a switch statement. There are three possible alert values, none, mild, and high. All I do is print out the message and then turn on the correct LED. Hey, that's pretty simple. The next step is to build an interrupt service routine. 
This function will be called every time you need to call the process events function. The problem is you don't want to call the process events function inside of an interrupt service routine. So what are you going to do? Simple, you're going to give a semaphore which will indicate to your main loop that it needs to call the process event function. Now let's look at the ISR. All it does is give the semaphore and possibly yield to a higher priority task. You could have skipped all of this ISR business and had the infinite loop repeatedly call the process events functions like we did in the CM0 plus file. The problem with that is most of the time it wouldn't do anything and as such would be a complete waste of CPU time. Really, we'd rather only call this function when there's something to do. The next part of this system is the main BLE task. The task is responsible for initializing the BLE, registering the callbacks, and then running the right time and calling the process events function. So declare the task, then print out a message that the BLE task has started, initialize the semaphore that will be used in the ISR, then start the BLE stack and register the generic event handler callback function. Now you need to get the stack started. This requires a number of events to be processed, so we'll just have that in a while loop that runs until all of the process events have happened. Once the stack is on, we can register that we want callbacks when something needs to be done by giving the ISR and we want to be called back when the immediate alert service is written, so we register that callback function as well. Finally, we build the infinite loop. This loop will wait until the semaphore is set in the ISR, then it will process events. This is cool because the task will go to sleep until there's something that needs to be done. That's it for the BLE task. The last part of the firmware is the main function. All that needs to happen here is we need to initialize the UART, create the BLE task, and start the RTOS scheduler. Now we can build, program, and test this thing. Now you can start CY Smart on your phone. Pull down to refresh the list of devices. Where I'm standing right now, I can see a bunch of different Bluetooth devices, but the one I'm interested in is called Find Me. Remember, we gave that name in the gap settings in the Bluetooth customizers. When I click on Find Me, you see that LED 9 turns on, indicating that we have a BLE connection. That's good. Now I can swipe over to the Find Me profile in CY Smart. And when I click on that, it gives me the option of setting mild alert. Hey, look, the LED is blue, that's good. Then high alert, and yes, the red LED turns on. And if I go back to no alert, it goes back to green. All right, all that seems to work. Finally, I click back to disconnect. And as soon as I do, LED nine turns off, indicating that I no longer have a Bluetooth connection. That's it. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to build a custom BLE service for CapSense that we will then integrate into our main controller for the robot. As always, you can post your comments and your questions and your suggestions in the PSOC 6 community, or you're welcome to email me at alan underscore haws at cypress.com or tweet me at AskIOTExpert. Thank you.